with the law firm of K&O Gates, and I'm with Jeff Brown, who is the president of Cowan Energy Corporation. Jeff, welcome. Thanks, Bill. Um, a few questions for you. Let's start off um, with a little bit of the history of Cowan Energy Corporation. How did the company come to be a leader in the energy storage market? What, what are your origins? Um, tell us yeah, a little bit about that. Story, sure, the origin yeah. story. The origin story. Yeah, so um, uh, sort of unique in comparison to a lot of the other companies that are here in the sense that we got started in a really massively different business. Um, back in the early 90s, uh, our current chairman and CEO founded the company as a commercial OEM business. So we were responsible for manufacturing and importing a large number of the goods you'd find on the shelves of uh, Walmart and Costco. Not We didn't own the brand, but we owned the manufacturing behind it. So stuff mm -hmm. like trampolines and uh, camp stoves and um, very uh, successful, very uh, lucrative business for really for two decades. And things started to change in the uh, in, not, in sort of the way that the Chinese manufacturing interfaced with the rest of the world, and we, our company had to adapt accordingly. So we looked around in the early 2010, 2011, and saw that as opposed to just focusing on the consumer goods market, which was, which was really getting more competitive, we wanted to find an area of the space that had, uh, was a newly developed product, and something that had quite a lot of uh, sort of real technical capability and technical IP. And so uh, he decided at an early age, at an early stage in 2011 that energy storage was going to be it. So we um, we ended up purchasing the, uh, the the company at the first stage. We ended up purchasing the company of our uh, of Virgil Beast and our CTO, who was a mm -hmm. uh, ex uh, a Greensmith alum that really had some interesting concepts on how to manage the balancing of internal cell balancing of a uh, of utility scale energy storage systems and um, that kernel the kernel of that idea those uh, though that IP was patented and we invested over five years over 10 million dollars in R&D to really take the initial ideas the initial software development and turning it into a commercial product after which time uh, so I joined the company in 2016 so you, where we really had our first commercial deployment in, um, in the uh, Aliso Canyon uh, solicitations mm -hmm. in Southern California. So we, in the middle of 2016, we got to a stage where the product was ready, the, um, the market and price was, was getting sufficiently uh, developed that we were able to um, go out directly to, uh, to Southern California Edison. They were released this emergency solicitation mm -hmm. to, uh, to help them deal with the Aliso Canyon issues, um, which was a, a natural, people may know, the, uh, related to a natural gas shortage. And um, really because of our manufacturing background, because we had essentially firmly, uh, fully developed uh, software and uh, hardware platform, uh, we were able to, in six months, start construction, uh, start manufacturing, uh, co complete uh, the manufacturing, ship the goods over to America, and then uh, uh, assemble and bring online the uh, our two megawatt Irvine project. So two megawatt, four megawatt hours in uh, less than a total of five months. So no, no, we, we went from, yeah, it was a fun five months, and um, and really it was a, a testament to a lot of the. I mean, it wouldn't have been possible if we had those three decades of manufacturing experience mm -hmm. and connections and the five years of R&D product development to then when the opportunity was there, we could really chomp a bit and, uh, and get it done. So, and it's a, frankly, it's a testament sort of uh, what our, our chairman wanted to build, which was when this opportunity came, we just went ahead and built it ourselves. So we, um, and then after that, it's sort of been off to the races. Um, we completed, since that time, we secured an additional 130 megawatt hours approximately of uh, EPA contracts, built the largest energy storage uh, project in Canada, mm -hmm. and um, have then sold off that entire portfolio, recapitalized our company, and now are firmly focused on uh, delivering what we believe is the highest value product and service to the utility scale energy storage space. 
Tell me, tell me a little bit more about the battery management system. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, what's, what's the secret sauce with that? Without giving away any, uh, any giving intellectual away property, sauce? but. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so first, I should just say one of our, the, sort of that IP that I referenced that, that, that was sort of the, the kernel of our company was surrounding our battery management system. So mm -hmm. BMS is something that a lot of people hear about. Um, uh, most products out there have to have some BMS. Uh, it is essentially a BMS so for people that aren't familiar, manage the charge, manage the state of health, essentially deal with the innards of a, of a DC battery stack um, to make sure that the energy that's being delivered maximizes the uh, safety of the product, maximizes the uh, long-term duration of the project, and, um, and that in any incremental uh, minute, the, the user knows how much energy is there and knows how to and can be able to operate effectively. So we, ha and our approach that's different and why it's distinct from where you're seeing many of the other people's uh, battery management systems, which were really developed for the EV space. Um, we have a proprietary uh, system that relies on what's called a uh, balancing circuit, a secondary balancing circuit. So almost the primary challenge in managing uh, uh, lithium ion, uh, large scale lithium ion systems, is that for you to make sure that you've got, well first, all manufacturing, all lithium ion systems have a, effectively they reach their capacity by putting say 300 cells all in series. So you can imagine 300 cells going all, sitting end to end, and to be able to make sure you get the maximum capacity out of those 300 cells, you have to make sure that they are all at exactly the same charge level. And that is not a trivial challenge. Mm -hmm. You always have slight variations in the manufacturing and the quality of the different cells, and it means that you are, you know, sort of a weakest link problem. You're always limited. The, the efficacy of your system is limited by its weakest link. We use, there are a number of solutions to the problem. We have what we believe is both the least expensive and also the most efficacious uh, way, which is using a separate balancing circuit to directly target any of the cells within that chain that are weak, meaning that they are over, they are either if they're undercharged, we can directly inject power into that cell, or if they are overcharged, then you we use resistor or passive resistance to be able to burn those off. That is a unique approach. No one else has the uh, has the technology, and and because of that, we're able to uh, give more of the capacity. Uh, at, essentially, allow the customer to access more of the inherent capacity of the cells that they purchase, and um, and we are able to we have more confidence in how our system is going to be able to perform in the long term. Mm -hmm. Great. So, how do you? Um, what, what is the typical scope of work? You're working on an energy storage project. Yeah. You're doing a turnkey project, or are you developing it to sell to someone else, or are you developing it to own it for your own account? Yeah. Power purchase agreements, build transfer. What, what's the what's what's we your? We put role a lot of thought into sort of what our business model is, right. is going to be, and what makes the most sense. Where are we adding the most value to the stack here? Because there's a lot of things to do. My background is development. The mm -hmm. last two years, uh, Pewin Powen did the Elisa Canyon project and the most recent Ontario project. We were the developer. We brought the we brought the project through permitting, brought the project through engineering, pre, uh, subcontracted out the construction. And we necessarily needed to do that, got the financing, we were financed our project last year. Um, necessarily we needed to do that because uh, we're, we're a new entrant to the space. We wanted to demonstrate how our systems were gonna work and how they could work at scale. We, however, in the long term, that's not what we, that's not where we should be, there are more then uh, you know, there are the conference is full of really competent, really qualified financiers and developers and construction experts. And we want our job is to pre create a product at a low enough price point that allows us allows them to do their job and make a, you know successful projects at a at a value point that is going to be of interest to utilities and the end customers. So what that means to me is that our job is to we are responsible for designing the system, procuring the DC stack, um, manufacturing it, and delivering it to site when we commission. We work with our developer and EPC partners 
to make sure that our system gets integrated as a, you know, as, as a low as a, as a cost as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what, do you have a preferred, would you, you put together an energy storage system, what, what's the underlying technology? Do you have a preferred source? Yeah. Is it always lithium ion? Do you consider other potential batteries? Or what, what are so, one thing I should say, we didn't, I didn't really hit on it earlier, is that Powin is a, from a business model perspective, so you asked about our IP and we have a unique BMS, and that's, that's differentiated and adds real value. The, the, the thing, though, that I think is almost more important than just the inc incremental value of that IP is that it sort of unlocks a business model that most people, other people, don't have access to, which is that we have our own battery management system, we have our own software, and it allows us to go to any cell vendor in the world to be able to incorporate and turn into utility scale batteries. So there's pricing advantage, there's an advantage to be able to uh, make sure you've got the right cell for the right application. You know, de depending upon cell chemistry, some might be preferred for power applications or energy applications, some are less expensive cells and you don't need 4,000 cycles, you only need 1,500 cycles. We can adapt our offering to whatever the customer's end need is. Um, we also have, we feel in the long term, uh, I don't think there's anybody here that thinks the final ideal, you know, platonic ideal of a, of a battery chemistry has been found, mm -hmm. um, and there is going to be continued uh, downward pressure on price and upward pressure on performance. Um, we want to have the flexibility so that any cell vendor, whoever brings the next sort of the next new uh, either new chemistry or uh, improved manufacturing process to be able to reach a, a sort of a, a lower all-in cost, uh, we're able to incorporate that into all our systems. So to answer your, correct, your, your answer directly, we're lithium ion based. Technically we could be any solid state uh, battery, but really right now, to me, that just means lithium ion. Uh, specifically for our most, for our product for 2018, it's lithium iron phosphate. Um, which has an, is just interesting because of its thermal component, of its thermal properties allow it to, uh, uh, it's, you know, essentially we don't have some of the fire combustion risk that mm -hmm. some of the other higher energy density batteries have. Um, and uh, it's a really, really reliable, really well-known technology. So mm -hmm. we feel not just we, but our customers as well, get, are, are comfortable knowing that we're wrapping an, a known solution. Okay. Well, Jeff, it sounds like Powin Energy is a really exciting future, and thanks for your time this afternoon. Yeah, thanks a lot, All right. I really appreciate talking about it. Okay. All right. Take care. Thanks. And then they want us to sit here for a couple of minutes while we...